happy Monday. We only have five days left of school before we go on our April vacation, which for me means we are going to Universal with the boys. Um, I have a whole bunch of packages here in the back that I'm going to unpack. We actually have a big research project that we are going to start right when we get back from April vacation. And we were lucky enough where our school district had a grant that we could apply for. Um, this was like a month ago. So I went ahead and applied for the grant, made a little presentation, and we got fully funded for the grant to be able to do our research project. So I'm gonna unpack all this and I'll explain a little bit more about what that will look like. But my goal for the week is just to take you along for a few days so you can see what we are up to the week before vacation. Um, we do have, you know, some fun things. We have the eclipse today. We have our spring concert coming up this week, which means we have a rehearsal and the show. Um, but really we have actually a lot we gotta learn. So I thought I'd bring you along for the ride and share what activities we are up to this week. I told you we are doing a research project so we really wanted to make this like a project-based learning entire project so really incorporate all sorts of arts and science and reading and writing and math so we ordered with our grant um, a bunch of diorama boxes because our students are going to research an animal they will have to inside the box create their animal with um, model magic so they'll make like a little clay figurine of their animal. We will of course write a research book. Also we got a bunch of these safari hats for the kids because we are going to host our own zoo here in the cafeteria where parents will come in, we'll get all dressed up and we'll get to share about our animals. We got some tickets back here because in math we're going to sell some tickets um, and figure out how much money we will earn and how much how many tickets we'll need per pe person and so on. Um, and the only other thing we're still waiting on is a big order from Barnes and Noble where we ordered a bunch of books that will help us with our research project. So hopefully that gets here in the next week. I can distribute this all to the other classrooms and we'll be ready to go when we get back from break. Also, that box was accidentally sent to me. That's not mine. The other things I brought from home, we have some um, bendable straws, which we're going to do today when we learn about the when we learn about plants and shade and what they need. And then another set of these task cards um, or task card boxes. All right, I have some copies to make for the week and I need to go return that box up to the office. But first I need to show you our grass. It is insanely long. I think I said this, I don't know if I said this on my video or if I said this over on Instagram, but I don't know what type of grass seed we use, but usually it takes a long time. This grass has grown like crazy, except one poor student whose grass has not start, started to sprout yet. I don't really know why, but um, we'll try to figure that out but let me show you everyone else's. I had to turn their cups around because I have their faces on them, but look at this grass, look how tall it is already. Originally, I thought I was going to have to take these home over break and have somebody water them for me while I um, while we continue to have them grow, but students will definitely be able to take these home, which is going to be nice for me. All right, let me take you over to the slides and we'll see what we are up to today. This is good because it's a nice little reminder for me because I haven't looked at these in a few days. So let's see what we're doing today. All right, we'll come in for some morning play. Looks like we got grilled cheese, ham cheese, and pretzel. Morning meeting. We'll talk about our weekend, calendar, Haggerty. For phonics, we'll start off with our three-part drill. And then we will review the vowel teams we have learned. The A's, E's, diphthong, oi, long vowel, O. Oh, today we're gonna to introduce ow and ow. Um, I had already showed you on this previous one, we know snow, uh, O-W, snow, O. And then we have the plow, O-W, plow, ow. And then same with O-U, we will learn soup, the U, and trout. So we have trout soup in one picture to have students know that they have both sounds. Um, and then this one was a review, I believe. Yeah, we did this last week. U, E, and E, W. After we review those sounds, we will do some blending. So we will figure out the word. This one has five sounds, blast. And today we are introducing suffix ed and suffix ing. 
So blasted, blasting, we'll talk about how we have a base word with a suffix, just like we did when we have S, and we will mention how ED means it already happened and ING means it's happening now. And then we will do a few of these. So blend, we'll talk about what it means, blended, blending, and we'll use them in sentences. Let's see, craft, crafted, crafting, and blink, blinked, blink ing. And then we will go on to some dictation. So here I will have students go ahead and dictate the base words first, and then I might have them add ing or ed. We are not doing any doubling of letters or even learning about the three sounds of ed just yet. We are just focusing on um, reading words with the ed sound and ing. Okay, so after snack and recess, for reading today, it is the solar eclipse day. So this, I believe, came from Natalie K. Kindergarten. She had a freebie that I grabbed. Um, so we are going to, she made like a little booklet. It was over on TPT. So we will learn what a solar eclipse is and then make this little craft to understand how the moon is going to pass in between the sun and the earth. And so we can actually show that. For reading centers, we have our usual. Everybody's name is obviously blocked up. The middle, I have a little read and match with words that have ED on them for students to practice. When is our typical win? We have some independent practice here. Looks like we have some words with ED practice that they'll do as well as some read and draws. And then we have subtraction without regrouping practice. In writing, they will watch a video all about Earth Day and do a little response. And then in math, we're playing roll, add, and color, which this is a game that is in actually my second grade print and play math unit. Um, so in math, this is what they will do, but this one is without regrouping. I just want students practicing and reading. Let's see, after lunch and recess, we of course have our math warm ups, uh, which are typical. And today we are again going to practice regrouping when we subtract. Today we're going to practice with a bunch of popsicle sticks, which I think is really going to help us. So I can show you this, actually I'll show you this tomorrow morning because I won't have time today, but I'll show you what we did with the popsicle sticks. Um, and then again, just some practice with that regrouping and the popsicle sticks just like Oh, I don't have them there. But just like regular connecting cubes allow students to actually decompose that number. Um, and then we, if we have time at the end, we will play race to zero, which I shared last week. PE is our special. When we get back, we have writing. Um, for poetry today, we are actually doing shape poems. So let me show you what that looks like. I did go ahead and finish up these slides and I put them in the writing club. I had said that I was working on them for the poems. So lesson three is we can write shape poems. We will learn about shape poems, what they are, and how they are created in the shape of the topic. Here's some examples they can see so they can get inspired. We will use a circle map. Here's where I will explain kind of how we need to go about doing this. I always say we can't just write, we have to plan first. So I'll pick a shape here in the middle and then I'll think of some words and phrases to describe that shape. Um, and then they will get five minutes to go plan on their own. Oops. And then I'll show them how I take my plan and how I turn it into a poem here. And so I'll first usually draw the outline of the shape and then I'll write words either around it, inside it. I might show them a few different examples and then they will get a chance to do it on their own. And then we always have a little sharing at the end. So what shape did you choose? What was the most difficult thing about writing this poem? And then our last thing for the day, Mystery Science put up a Why Does It Get Dark During a Solar Eclipse video. So we will go ahead and watch that. We'll put on our glasses and we will go observe the solar eclipse outside. I think I already mentioned this, but our school got us all um, the glasses so we can go observe safely. Also up here in Massachusetts, we are kind of nearing that total. We're not nearing totality. I think we're like 93% which is decently close, but I think we get that around um, between 2.15 and 4, which is exactly our dismissal time. So admin wanted to make sure that every pair, that every student has a pair of these glasses. So that's our plan for today. I will check in tomorrow, um, let you know kind of what we're up to for the rest of the week. Um, and I'll show you that popsicle stick activity as well in the morning. So see you tomorrow. Hi everyone, popping in from the future for a quick second. It's actually Thursday the 11th, and I know I finished filming this video on the on Tuesday the 9th, but there was one thing I wanted to share with you because I finished it last night and I'm really excited about it and I forgot to mention it in the video. I know I've mentioned it in other videos, but this summer I'm actually presenting at the Educator Summit. It is a completely virtual online conference. Um, last time over the winter I had a session on writing tips, but this session I have all about 
quick and easy math routines that we can implement into our classroom to help students spiral review skills. It's something that I'm doing constantly in my class this year. So I just have like three quick routines um, and I share ways to like help implement it and all this fun stuff. I just finished filming it last night, so I'm excited about it and I wanted to share it with you. If you're interested in joining me at that conference, just click the link down below. Um, there's a coupon code. If you type in Susan 10, you will get a discount for your purchase as well. So just wanted to mention that. All right, back to the video. It's a coffee before the coffee, before I head into work type of day. Very sunny. Happy Tuesday. Tuesday again I know I just saw you in the car but i um, getting some things ready this morning I remember yesterday I wanted to show you what we did for math with the popsicle stick so let me start off there for today's video and then I will see um, I'll kind of share the other things we did I think yesterday I said we were going to do shape poems which we actually didn't I changed it to color poems and they came out so cute I am loving their little poetry books so I want to show you those as well um, but first let's talk about math Okay, I'm gonna bring the stuff back here because the rug is way too bright. But um, you can still see the slides from over here. Well, now it just went black, so one sec, there we go. Um, same warm up slides we've been doing. These have found to be very beneficial for my students and the way they are now, if I can get it, there we go. The way they're now talking about these number concepts is like phenomenal. So I love this, I'm going to stick with this for the rest of the week. So we show some place value blocks and then we are adding, right? So we have been adding tens and ones. I have not been re doing regrouping with the math talk. This is where, again, I've mentioned this a hundred times, but this is where I really want them to be flexible with numbers. So some friends are still just identifying this number as 32. Other friends are now taking the step and saying like, okay, 13, if I visualize that over here, we add a 10 and three ones and they kind of count it up or they can come draw it. And then other friends are doing a great job of, I also hate saying friends, but students, there we go. Um, other students are doing a great job of decomposing into tens and ones. And that's like the goal that I'm looking for. So they're saying, oh, we have three tens and one 10. So that's 40. And then we have um, two ones and three ones, 45. So that is really the goal that I'm looking for. And they're doing this without, you know, making it stack math as we call it by lining the numbers up. They're just able to identify that. But then I also show it as stack math up there. So we're gonna stick with these 35 minus 22. So again, some are still visualizing, oh, I'm crossing out two of these and two of these. Let me count up what we have left. Um, others are able to say, okay, three tens minus two tens and so on. Lots of three add end addition because this is a great way for them to really decompose those numbers. Um, yesterday, you know, I had friends say, okay, I took the six and I changed that into five and one, and then I put the five over here with this five to make it 10. And then I have the seven and the one equals eight, and then 10 plus eight equals 18. Like, I love hearing that. We had a guest um, in the classroom during that time, and they were like, oh my gosh which makes me feel good, but also that's exactly what we want first graders to be doing, breaking apart those numbers. And then we always have a challenge with a missing number. Okay, let's talk about regrouping. So regrouping with subtraction is something I have a little bit of a gripe about. So let me actually start there. So regrouping and subtraction is actually not a first grade standard. It's not in the Common Core and it's not um, a Massachusetts framework. So. I have a hard time with us then wasting instruction, my opinion, wasting instructional days teaching this when students are not developmentally ready for it. I don't think it's really appropriate for them. Um, and so I, we had to talk with my, um, my math coordinator about it and our, or our curriculum director. And they were saying, you know, it's important to like expose them to it, really stick with the hands-on, but then our curriculum, Math and Focus, like it shows them the algorithm for regrouping with subtraction. And like, I don't, I'm like having a mental problem where I'm having a hard time wrapping my head around showing my students that and confusing them. But I understand it's just for exposure. 
But then on the other side, I'm like, okay, well, if it's just for exposure and we aren't grading on it, nor do they need to know it, then why am I wasting those days on it? It's a whole me problem. It's a gripe I have, and it's something I'm working hard to get over right now. So when it comes to subtraction with regrouping, I have spent the last three days really just focusing on, and I'm okay with this. I'm totally fine with this. Um, focusing on that word regroup. We spent a lot of time doing regrouping when we had 10 ones and we had to regroup it and move it to the tens column, that unitizing, right? That is, an in addition, it is a standard and we worked a lot on that. So now I'm getting students to understand that, wait a second, also when we regroup, we can take that 10 and we can turn it into 10 ones and we still have the same number. And then we did start doing it with a little bit of subtraction. So we started, I showed this with um, connecting cubes. I don't know why, but you know what connecting cubes are. But with connecting cubes, that way they could really see the 10 and I could break it apart. So I would just show like 20 cubes. I actually I shared this in last week's video. I was like, we have 20, I need to take away seven. Can I do that? Look at my base 10 or look at my place value chart. I don't have, you know, seven ones or whatever I just said to take away. So we need to regroup it. So we practice that. We practice the game uh, race to zero, which I also shared last week. Just a lot of this regrouping practice. I don't have enough ones. What can I do? I can regroup. So we practice this with the connecting cubes. We practice this with base 10 blocks. We did that with a partner, um, I think at the end of last week, where it would just be like, okay, build 22. So they would build it on their place value mat with those um, base 10 blocks. And then we would say minus seven. What do we need to do? We need to regroup. And so there we practiced exchanging the uh, 10 rod for 10 ones and putting it into the ones column and then subtracting. And even that, is like a lot for students, right? They have a really hard time exchanging that base 10 block and then uh, making sure they put all 10 over into the ones before they subtract because a lot of them will try to subtract beforehand or they'll try to make the ones column match 10. So if they already had three there, they don't add 10 more. It's a whole thing. Again, they're not developmentally ready, but here we go. So yesterday we practiced one more time um, doing these subtraction activities and we did it with popsicle sticks. So let me show you what that looked like. So there's my fancy slide. Let's practice regrouping when subtracting. We talked about what regrouping meant. That's going to go black. It's fine. Um, we talked about what regrouping meant at this point. We know that it can take 10. And so the answer that I'm looking for, which is what my students are giving me now, is that regrouping is just changing the way a number looks. So um, you're not changing the number. It's just changing the way it looks. So they don't say those words exactly. They will say it's taking 10 ones and making it into a 10 or taking a 10 and making it into 10, 10 ones, but the number doesn't change. So what I did is I gave every partner and I showed them how to do this on the rug first, of course, like always. I gave every pair um, four tens and we talked about the popsicle sticks and how many is in a bundle. They knew it was 10 right away. I opened one up and showed how it was actually 10. And I said, okay, we have 40 here. And then just like I've done before with the base 10 blocks and with the connecting cubes, I gave them a problem. I said, okay, I have 40 here. I wanna do 40 minus 13. How could I do that? So just like I did with the other problems, I say, okay, I have 40 here. I wanna do 40 minus seven. Look over at my ones. Do I have any ones here to take away? What do I need to do? So again, this is just another way to show them. I show them how I take the elastic off and I actually go ahead and plop them here. I put all 10 here. Let me just do it so you can really see. Boom. And this was good too because there's no exchanging like the base 10 blocks, which aren't my favorite to use in um, for these subjects, but I like to expose them to it. But this way they can just plop it here, right? Even if there were already ones here. They just put all 10 of them there. They don't need to count them out. They know it's a bundle of 10. Now can we subtract 7? And we would go ahead and subtract 7 and we would see what our answer is. So then I had students go over to... Uh, their spots kind of just around the room with a partner. They would each have four bundles of 10 and a place value map. And then looking at the board, we would have one of the partners would go ahead and build this number first, 25. And so I liked this because even within the building of the number, they had to ungroup or regroup some of the tens in ones. So they had to take apart the bundles, like physically, they had to take apart the 10, um, show what it should look like. So partner A would build the number, partner B would subtract nine. So we'd say, what do you have to do first? Regroup. So they all took apart one of the popsicle stick bundles, put all 10 over into the ones column, 
and then subtracted nine and then we got the answer and meanwhile i would write down like the stack math version up here just so they could see it i didn't even explain what it meant yet because i was just showing it for them because today we'll kind of do that and then we would switch partners so partner b would now build 32 partner a would take away five clear your board build 17 take away eight clear your board build 31 take away seven there we go so this took a decently long time because um, every time they were making a bundle or taking apart a bundle, they had to really make sure that they had 10 here. They had to wrap it with the rubber band. And even though it took a while, I think it was so beneficial because they could really feel and see what the 10 looked like. Every time they were regrouping it again um, to make a new number, let's say they had too many ones from our previous problem and they had to make 31, they had to really check that there were 10 here. They counted it out. They wrapped um, the rubber band around it. Fine motor practice for many of them. Um, and then they had to break it apart so they could subtract. So popsicle sticks was a huge win in terms of really getting students to understand the whole regrouping process. And that leads us to today, which is the one and only instructional day that I will actually teach my students what the subtraction with regrouping algorithm looks like. And this is for exposure only. I do not expect my students to write it. I definitely have a group of like three or four that might want to challenge themselves and try it. And that is what today's lesson is for. Be like, if you want to try it, go ahead. Um, everyone else, I just want you focusing on using manipulatives. So, and then on Thursday, we're doing a review day. And with that higher group, um, when I pull them back to practice this, I will ask them to do the algorithm and I'll show them kind of how that works. But I am not expecting that of anybody. We're not grading it. Um, so today will be that exposure day of showing them what the algorithm looks like, how we, you know, cross out what the regrouping looks like and write it on the board um, and so on. Still don't love it, but I'm fine to spend one day on it. And I'm fine with the practice that we've done so far where again it's just really getting students to understand that regrouping doesn't just mean taking 10 ones as a bundle of 10 it also means having a bundle of 10 and breaking it apart again that kind of relationship between addition and subtraction so i'd also love to know from you if you are a first grade teacher do you teach subtraction with regrouping in your curriculum or at your school let me know because if so i think we need to make like a whole countrywide change where we don't even teach that at all. We just focus on the concepts. Um, and then that's a second grade still. We can give them a deeper understanding of these numbers and then second grade handles that when they're more ready. I'll get off my soapbox now. All right, let's just look real quick at today's math plans. So we can regroup when we subtract two digit numbers. We've got the same standard that we've had for a few days now. Um, here I'm just showing some base 10 blocks because that's what we're going to use today. So I will mention before this that we have used connecting cubes. We used popsicle sticks. Today we're gonna use our base 10 blocks. And this um, whole lesson is basically from my math coach where we just went and watched her um, teach this lesson because it's so tricky. So this is the one where we introduce the algorithm and she used her dog, but I'm using my, my Sully. So it says, Sully loves peas. I had 40 peas and Sully ate 18 of them. How many peas do I have left? Use a place value chart and some base 10 blocks to solve. What step would you do first and why? So of course I'll have them here in a circle. I'll have my chart, my chart and my blocks and we will figure out what we need to do. I think by now my students will recognize that they need to regroup. And so we will go ahead and exchange and then this is where I will show them how I'm going to write it on here. So again, I'm going to preface this by saying, ooh, this is a second grade thing. I'm gonna show you guys. I think you're ready to see it, lies. But I'm going to show them anyway how it works, what it looks like right up here on the board, 40 minus 18, um, kind of as I'm doing it here. I won't like finish the subtraction problem yet. After I regroup, I will show them what it looks like and then I will subtract. And then everybody's going to take their own board. Usually we work with partners, but for this one, I'm gonna give everybody their own board and everybody their own base 10 blocks. That way they, I can kind of quickly walk around and see who's getting this on their own. So we have 31 they will build minus 14. So this, one, this time they're going to be doing a two digit number. We've really been trying to stick to one digit numbers. Um, so we have to remind them to don't forget to also do the tens place after you subtract the ones place. And I will show the algorithm here. 21 minus 16, 35 minus 19, 36 
minus 18. So we'll just practice a bunch of these together. And again, this is for me to kind of not realize who isn't getting it, because I think that's going to be most of the kids, but kind of pick out who's able to get this quickly so I know which group I can challenge on Thursday. Um, kind of give those next level skills type thing. And then we do have a regrouping practice sheet um, if we get there, depending on how long this activity takes, which might take a while. So voila, that's what we are up to in math. Um, then let's see, today's only Tuesday. So on Wednesday, tomorrow, we are doing addition and subtraction word problems, story problems. And then on Thursday, we're doing a review day. And then Friday before vacation, we are doing a show what we know test. So that will be fun. Um, we are finishing up suffix ed and ing in foundations this week, and we'll also test them on Friday. I mentioned this already, but um, Friday begins our April vacation. Me and the boys are going to Universal Studios, so we will have a ball. I'm so excited. Um, so we're really kind of wrapping things up here. We will be coming back to addition and subtraction with and without regrouping when we get to our numbers to 120 unit. So right now we're only kind of doing within 40. I really go within 50, but um, numbers within 40, and then we will circle back to this. So it's not like this is the last time they need to know this. Before I end the video, I do just want to show you some of our poems because I just think they're so cute. Okay, I've been storing the poems in their, um, these are their old writing folders. So let me just take a couple out and let me make sure their names are hidden. Okay, so yesterday I told you we did color poems. And first we went ahead and planned. If you saw my slides yesterday, they all kind of run the same way. We have, I teach what the type of poem is, if there are any rules to it. Um, I show them how I would plan one for me, and then I give them five minutes to plan on their own, and then I show them how I take my plan and turn it into a poem, and then they go do the same thing for 10 minutes. So it's pretty structured and we move quickly. Um, for color poems, we have this little planning sheet. This is again in the SJT Writing Club. Um, there, she picked green, I had done yellow for mine. So it looks like baby Yoda and plants, sounds like grass swishing, tastes like limes, and smells like green clovers and stems of flowers, so cute. And then I basically just showed them for this color poem, everything's already written here for you. So this one's pretty structured. So we wrote the color up here. So green looks like baby Yoda and plants. Green sounds like grass swishing. Green smells like clovers and stems of flowers and green tastes like limes and leaves. And then she drew a cute little picture. I love it, they came out so cute. And then this is the cover of their book. So she just drew things that she loved here. I just covered her name here, but this is another one. This is our feelings poem, Happiness Is. I feel happy when I get to watch movies with my family. Happiness is like yellow, green, and pink. When I feel happy, I like to play with my four puppies and hug my mommy. So cute. And then I had already shared this other one. Wait one sec. I had shared, I think, about the sensory poems, which I love. I always do popcorn. I just think it's a fun one. So she titled it Popcorn Pops. I hear popping from the machine. I see popcorn flying everywhere. I smell popcorn and it's a little bit salty. I feel the bumpiness of the popcorn and I taste popcorn nice and buttery. And then the last one we've done so far is an acrostic poem. Let me show that. And we just did one for spring. So she said it's sister's birthday, pretty flowers, ringing like bees wings, in the breeze, nice bird sounds and green grass. So cute. So we still have, we're gonna do a cinquain poem. We are going to do the shape poem. And I think there's one more that I can't remember right now, but we already have a nice little book. And then on Friday, I'm going to, I was gonna bind them, but I don't know if I have time. So I might just have to staple them and send them home. Maybe I'll put their cover on a piece of construction paper. Actually, that's what I'll do. And then I'll staple it all nicely and send it home for their little writing assignment in spring. All right, so that is what we are up to this week. I'm actually gonna do over my vacation week, a plan with me video, where I'm gonna show you how I make my slides and just some of the things we will be doing when we get back from vacation. So I've got a bunch of videos ready for you and I'm excited to share what we're up to. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up so I know. Make sure you are subscribed to my channel and click that bell. That way you're notified of every new video. See you in the next one, bye.